Arctic, the dog days of summer draw to a close, and Alaska braces for Mother Nature's icy grip. On this episode of Life Below Zero. One, two, three. Sue Aiken's grandson struggles with a lesson in bush survival. A splash. A sudden danger could doom the hailstones journey home. We just... Glenn scours the tundra for an essential element of winter survival. And in Eagle, sparks fly as cold weather preparations get underway. One spark, this whole place will go up real fast. Sometimes or not, but we're gonna go ahead and try and put the sneak on it. My name's Nathan. Um, I'm Sue's grandson. She is trying to teach me how to get a caribou. Keep your eyes open. Nathan is visiting from the lower 48 with little experience in the bush. Sue hopes to teach him how to better survive Kavik's harsh conditions. My grandma's life is very, very cool. Hunting. Most grandmas don't do that. I do worry about her a lot. Um, it is good for me to come up here and check on her. Uh, a couple of years ago, she got attacked by a bear. With winter on the horizon, Sue has a limited opportunity to hunt caribou before the tundra freezes and the animals become scarce. This ground is extremely uneven, isn't it? So take your time, lead with your toe, let your toes and everything tell you where the obstructions are. Breaking your ankle out here, nobody's gonna be helping you, are they? There's gonna come a day, I don't know what my expiration date is, but it's coming. And I'd like to know that uh, if he needs to, he has a skill called hunting and he can get his own food. What I try to instill in my grandchildren is believe in yourself, be proud of yourself, be a good person all the time, grab life by the balls and live it. Well, I'm thinking if we don't spook him or see him by the time we hit that next hops over there, then we'll turn around and head back. A bugs like this, this late in the year, it's just not even heard of. So they are keeping my food source away. We haven't run across a caribou. So I'm thinking they're, uh, they're probably fairly stunned at the bug situation. They don't eat them, but they do get bugged by them. And when you're hunting for your means of supporting yourself food-wise, it is not a guarantee. Nature has a way of just doing what it wants, huh? Yeah. It is part of life up here, and if he's really interested in it, you know, like he says, he wouldn't mind running this place when I keel. Well, this is part of the territory. Better get used to it. You think you could work in an office like this? Yeah. You think so? Bears are going to try to eat you. Cold is going to try to kill you. Bugs are going to try to carry you off. That don't work. You can handle that? If you want to live in the wilderness, close to nature, in an area that hasn't been changed drastically by human activities, this is one of the very few places left. By the end of October, the sun sets for the last time. I won't see it again for over 100 days. I've got about a month to get certain jobs done that I want to do outside. It's important to be all set up ahead of time. I have to cut a considerable amount of wood out here to get through the year. During the winter time, during the coldest months of the year, I'll go through four cubic feet of wood in one day. That's about a quart a month. Food, water, clothing, shelter. And to keep that shelter warm, I've got to have wood. You can see the forest here. It's all green trees that are living. I don't like to cut those for wood. I like to cut dead wood because it's lighter and it burns better. I've cut all the dead wood in this area close to my camp. Over the years, I've had to go further and further away from my camp in order to get firewood. So today, I'll probably go a few hundred yards from camp. It's a long ways to get wood back, but that's the nearest that I can get enough dead wood now. I don't use a calendar out here, but I pay attention to the seasons. When the leaves start changing color, it's time to get ready for winter. 
pretty soon that lake's gonna freeze over and I need some firewood out here. So this looks great. Lots of dead trees close together. I just like the feeling of being in shape and using my body physically. Out here, I don't have to worry about going to a gym with all the jobs I do. I choose to do them in ways that I get a lot of exercise. Even though the job itself might get a bit mundane, it's the environment I'm doing it in that keeps it interesting. I didn't come here because it was paradise or the Garden of Eden. I chose this spot to live because it was the last place in the world where I thought I could live this way. The winter that's coming, I'm gonna burn this amount of wood in just a couple of weeks time. So I have to start building piles up now around the woods, to make sure I stay a little bit ahead and have plenty of wood to get me through the cold weather. This is a good start, but I got a lot more work to do. You're always going to have a few setbacks. That's just a part of living out here. Everybody gets their butt kicked every now and then. Hopefully you don't lose your life doing it. Feels like fall to me. <laughs> Feels like the middle of fall to me. Holy cow. I can't believe the hills. Right now we're getting into the waning part of the summer. Uh, the fall colors are already happening in the high country across the river from us. And that's our barometer telling us that, that fall and winter are very soon to be here. Today's project is to uh, start emptying out the trash we've been accumulating since the flood around here for four or five years now. My hopes are to get rid of this trash by bringing it over to the landfill, burning what will burn, pushing the rest into the pit. Uh, the pit is full of water, so any metal is going to rust away pretty quick. We're getting into late summer. We've had a little bit of rain, so things are a little bit damp, and that's why I'm choosing this day to do this. But there's always a potential for starting a forest fire. And once started, there's no putting it out. I think what I'm going to do here is uh, fire this pump up and then try and spray some water around here to wet, wet the area down a little bit. The type of stuff I'm burning is a lot of paper and stuff that's going to throw out a lot of embers. It only takes one spark in this black spruce forest and this whole place will go up real fast. stuff the rest of their lives and it'll be important lessons and it's also an important feeling for them to know that they're successful that they can do exactly what it takes to provide for themselves place where you store your things. We frequent this spot from February till about the end of August. And then the rest of our year is spent up Norvik. This is a higher ridge right here. I'm thinking more, more towards past the old house pit here. I'm going to leave my equipment behind. Fishing net, maybe a tent, cook stove, stuff like that. Easily removable. And put it right here where there have been other caches and people for a couple thousand years probably. I think a whole family probably lived there at one time, huh? Yeah. Now it's just a hole in the ground. Yeah, now it's our turn. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could take all this stuff home, but it would be very expensive. It would take many loads. Just taking it across the ocean would be very costly, and it would be very, very, very time-consuming. I don't want to build a cache too much higher than you or myself, so I'll make it just high enough for myself to go into, and then build you a ladder, and we'll put our things yeah, right here. I wanted in the willows, too, so that way it could be kind of... Private. Private, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yep, yep this will be the place then. I need to have it weatherproof, I need to have it animal proof, and I need to have it river proof because in the spring the river floods. Water will be flowing right over this. Alright, we'll get to it. When you're gonna 
can build something, you might as well use the best materials possible. Since those best materials are available, just up river from where I camp, I decided instead of using driftwood, that I would make a right, proper, long-lasting cache. My plan is to uh, get some longer poles, the ones that will go in the ground. What I need are fresher trees because they can bear the weight. They have the strength that I'm looking for, and they'll last a long time. Yep. That's what I want. Oh, yeah. Part of uh, having camps and living the way we do is to be able to leave certain specific equipment behind. So if I have certain things that I use only in a certain area, I'd rather put them into a cache. You know, instead of hauling the equipment back and forth with us. We uh, trust in our neighbors and we trust in the people in the Kiwalik and the neighboring villages not to mess with our stuff. This can be pretty tough work. Work up a heck of a sweat. Hopefully not injure yourself, but um, nobody's going to do it for me. quite a bit by myself and that's a power tool and any power tool you have to respect them the reason why we use them is because they're more powerful than us freak me out get her in the groove in the groove the last thing i want to do is cut myself getting myself back down river and then finding a flight that would take me to anchorage to a proper doctor could be hours or days in the making and um, a lot of people don't really survive that You know, you really can't drive a car for an entire lifetime. You can't shoot a gun for an entire lifetime. There's a time that comes when things are wore out and need to be replaced. I got the four logs I came up here to get. Pretty long. Pretty sure I can make eight pieces of wood out of them. So I'm pretty happy with what I got. It's about the most I can manage myself. If I cut them up right now, the fact is you can make a long piece of wood short as much as you want. You're gonna make no short piece of wood long. So my best bet is to keep them intact like this. Put them in the boat. Balance carefully and go back home now. Oh, green trees are so heavy. These are still full of moisture. They have a lot of integrity. They're fresh and they'll last many, many years. because the whole environment, it just suits the way my brain works. I find it intellectually stimulating to be out here, physically stimulating. And it's just a very central experience, too. With winter approaching, Glenn Villeneuve works around the clock gathering wood to help him survive. The firewood process is that I take a standing tree, fell it in the woods, and cut it into a six-foot-long piece that'll fit in my sled to get it home. Once I get it home, I stack the six-foot-long sled-length pieces here in the yard. Then I use this saw buck with the larger diameter pieces to saw them with a bow saw into lengths that'll fit in my stove. If it's large diameter, I also have to split it after I saw it. Winter can be pretty challenging. If you're not ready for it, and you get caught behind, if you don't have firewood, for example, and all of a sudden winter sets in, it can be quite a challenge just to keep up. It can be hand to mouth. I've done that before when I don't have any wood in reserve. There, just made it. The, this is an interesting thing. Gosh, I can't count them with just my fingernail for a reference, but this tree's very old. There's the middle right there. One, two, three. So that's about 10 years right there. 10, 20, 30, 60, 70, 80. That tree is well over 100 years old. Larger 
pieces have to then be split, then I can fit them in my stove. Doesn't want to go. It's going to take several wax at least. A wedge is a powerful tool. You can do a lot with a wedge. For the most difficult pieces, I have to use this system. This is four cubic feet. On a really cold day in the winter, this full wood crib will get burned up in one 24 hour period. And wood is what I use for cooking. It's what I use for heating hot water. It's nice to have a little bit of reserve wood pile built up. When I start moose hunting in the fall, I want to just focus on hunting every day. I don't want to be worrying about cutting firewood for a couple of weeks. So I've got some firewood now to see me through that period. I feel prepared and I feel excited. Just a few more weeks. It'll be time to start hunting. There's always a challenge out here. There's always adaptation. Nothing is the same every year. You're constantly rethinking how you're gonna do something, adapting to it, and hopefully winning, not losing. <laughs> this over there and use my big bucket on this to get rid of this trash by bringing it over to the landfill. But we've got some electrical lines that I need to go underneath of that if I was to catch that with the bulldozer on the way underneath, it would rip out the power lines from our house. Right now we're running a 6,000 watt generator to uh, run the dehydrators and the freezers. So it's pretty dangerous handling overhead power lines. Yeah, better go get Kate, make sure she can keep an eye on this wire for me. The last thing I want to do is snag that with my boom on the tractor because that's going to electrify my tractor and, and I think I'm going to get a uh, new hairdo pretty quick. So we've got to come up with a method here to get those wires up and out of the way until I can get past them. So I need you to keep an eye on this wire here. Yeah. When I go under with the boom, make sure I don't snag that wire, okay? And just holler really loud. I'll stand right here by it. Yeah, you need two hands on it because you may have to push it up. I don't know. Okay. Watch for my fist. That means stop. fires that would be absolutely devastating to us uh, if we burn this country around here we got no protection from the elements all right let's get a fire going here basically i got a philosophy like if i don't need something i go without it me get up to my chimney and I clean my chimney as often as once a week. The reason I have to go up there and clean the chimney so much is pre a buildup inside the stovepipe. 
that's a highly flammable material. If that catches on fire, the stovepipe can get so hot that it can catch the whole place on fire. That it would be nice to just have a ladder here all the time. Then I could just come out and easily go up whenever I wanted to, make the job a lot simpler. This is some leftover wood from another project. Hopefully I can get enough here to get started with the ladder project, if not finish it. So I'm just going to set it upside down. I don't want it too narrow, but I don't want it too wide. So time to make some rungs. In this environment, the reality is you have to think ahead. You have to plan because the resources just aren't here year round. You have such extreme differences in the seasons. You do have to take into account what's around the corner. So when something's available, I have to take advantage of it. You might want to live in the moment, but you do have to plan for the future. There's no doubt about that. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it's a beauty. Look at that. I'm going to go up and check my chimney. A little creosote in there. There. That looks nice and clean. You have to be dead nuts about who you are, what you want out of life, and how the hell you're going to get it. You better have both hands on the pistol and ready to aim and shoot. just changed their migration route and uh, I'm gonna make the most of the opportunity while I can. Let's go start hiking. All right. I wanna get closer, but they're gonna make us. Coming on the road, they kinda made us. We're gonna have water to go through. We'll try to stay low. recognizes that hunting is going to get the meat that I need. He recognizes that I can love animals, turn it off, and shoot one. Can he do the same thing? every opportunity to fill her freezer before winter sets in. section of stream, didn't you? Yeah. What do you step on? You step on the weeds, huh? I think you kind of missed it and decided to go for a swim. You need a shower that bad, huh? You're traveling with a firearm. Safety's on. Yeah, I'm not swimming that. I don't get to see my family very often. That's something I've chosen. That's one of the 
repercussions of having the lifestyle that pleases me. But when I do, it's it's cherished and valued time. What do you think? Meat in the freezer? You meat in the freezer? Come here. So, this is a bull. In the caribou family, females and males get racks. Males are generally bigger, not always. First thing we do, you always say thanks. This guy gave up his life so we could have food, didn't he? Yeah. So what do you do? Get over here and tell him thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you respect the life you take, man. Being here, I think it's a healthy experience. He's developing a sense of self and responsibility for his own actions. Thank you for helping me, buddy. Yeah. We gotta get back to the four-wheeler, get the knife bag, get the trailer, and bring him in. A lot of people just don't get the idea of being out here. They just don't realize that we get to shape ourselves here and we get to flow with nature. looming, Chip must build a cache to store his supplies before they venture back home to Norvik. Should work. Cut through the saw at first with the shovel. We know this area very well, and we come back all the time, so I really need to have the cache here so that I'm not hauling this stuff back and forth. It'll be here in place. It's a good waterproof place to put my equipment. Okay. And it's kind of a landmark, too, because in the middle of winter, when this is all white, that cache will stick out. I guess the next one will be about here. I've selected an area where it's nice and high, where it's fairly brush-free at the moment. And then I'm going to dig down the holes, and when I have the measurement of how deep my hole is, then I can measure my cache off of that. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I've hit permafrost. Permafrost is permanently frozen ground that northern Alaska is full of. The permafrost here is probably about two, maybe three feet down, and I'm, the deeper, the better. Call that good. I got four holes. I need to put in my eight posts, my four good, strong, rigid ones, my two shorter ones, put my cross beams, make my floor, make my walls, make my roof, make a ladder and be done with it. I want to make it about high enough to walk under. And it keeps it above the water. It keeps it above most animals. It takes me and my wife to carry the post, pack them really good so that they don't go anywhere, and then uh, start just building on the platform up there. See what we can get. Oh, is it all the way in? That's about two. Whoa. This one is kind of heavier. Those logs are kind of heavy, but late enough for Chip and I to carry them. But uh, if something were to fall on us, I'm sure it would put a pretty scratch. Part of the renewal process is making storage. If you don't store your things properly through the winter, away from the animals and the weather, you ain't gonna have it very long. Oh my god, I can't even lift this over my shoulder. This one's heavy. Add some mud in there. Oh, that one goes deep. Right on. Okay, I can do the rest of this myself. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. Yep. Well, I'll get to doing this. You got berry picking to do? Yep. Okay, I can do the rest of this myself. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. Yep. Well, I'll get to doing this. You got berry picking to do? Yep. Get your berry picking. Oh, it's scary! Oh my god! Oh! Never trust a tree. One of the posts just leaned, so um, it freaked me out. But I just got to remember your surroundings and keep your eyes open. I have uh, my four tall posts in the ground, and I'm making my short posts that fit right up next to them. This place floods out every year. That's why I wouldn't build anything permanent here, because every year this is completely underwater. If I had to take it down and move it, or if I needed firewood for burning, this would be down in probably 20 minutes. That's the way I like it. Oh, this is 
is recycled rope. Probably cost me less than a gallon of gas. When it came to using the chainsaw, probably cost me 10 gallons in gas to go get the trees up the river. So I would say, cost me 100 bucks probably in my time, of course. It's coming along like it should be. These are sheets of plywood that we collected up off the coast. You go down the coast and there's a sheet of plywood sitting by the side of the beach. You tend to throw it into your boat. Two summers I accumulated 11 sheets of plywood. Yeah. I can handle that. Well, a fella can certainly look around the Kiwalik a little better from up here. This is an excellent perch in the middle of an excellent hunting place. I'm gonna box this in basically. Whenever we want in the cache, we'll just have to untie the front board and drop it down, take out whatever it is we're looking for. We spend so much time here in this camp that this is worth leaving behind. It should work out pretty good. I'm not out here for the isolation, but it goes with the territory. I'm out here for the nature and wilderness. And where there's much wilderness left, there aren't a whole lot of people. Maybe I should put another piece of wood on the fire. It falls short up here. It's about a month long, and then it can be winter. And then all of a sudden, there's snow over all the land. There, the resources just aren't here year-round. You might want to live in the moment, but you do have to plan for the future to a degree. There's no doubt about that. I remember the first time I ever camped at this lake. That was... It must have been 13 or 14 years ago. It was like I just found the perfect little spot for me out here. And I just thought it was like paradise here. Whitefish. Mm. Really tasty. are getting shorter. My favorite time of the year is just around the corner. In another month from now, I'll be hunting moose. I'll be real busy with plenty of work to do at that time, so I don't want to think about firewood. I don't want to think about building a ladder. This is the time to get that all taken care of. So I got my ladder built, chimney clean, got some wood cut. I'm going to be well prepared to take advantage of the hunting season, my favorite time of the year. Go out and get a moose. And I won't have to think about the firewood and these jobs that I've taken care of now. I'm already worried about winter. I've got to think all of the time, how can I get what I need to survive? With the mosquitoes dying down and the caribou herd migrating, Suma sees every chance to stock up for winter. I'm an opportunist. We all are when we live out in the bush. The opportunity to get meat, sure you're gonna do it. There he is. I gotta be very careful and close to camp. If we stay low, there's a chance they could cross this direction. So, let's get closer to the bush. The camp is here. We're here. The caribou are between the two. Do we have clients in camp? Yes. Ken, do you know, can you tell exactly where they're at? No. 
All right, so what is the one direction we can't shoot? We can't compromise the safety of other people, huh? Yeah. It would have been good had it been the right direction, huh? You're guaranteed an opportunity to hunt, but you gotta do it wisely, huh? Yeah. We got a little meat in the freezer we gotta take care of, so let's go do it. You know what? I'm proud of you for that decision, man. Sometimes all you get out of the hunting experience is a good stock or a good stretch of the legs. Anything that way? Right there. Okay, that's the direction we can shoot in, huh? So you want to try and go over there? Is that a clear shot? Yeah. You want to try and sneak on them and see how far it is? All right. Just keep low. That's an awful tough location. Come on, Nathan. You're gonna have to hang on to the brush. time with him, help teach him some skills that he didn't have. Meat pile. This thaw season has seen the end of my first year being a business owner. It's been good, clients in and out. Thank you. I've learned a lot. I've learned that I have a lot more to learn. And there's been epic fails. No, 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 no. But there's been epic rewards. Got it. Yes, it's working. Yay, me. Thank you very much. There'll be some tasty little meat. But that's life. Woo! <laughs> All I can say about this winter is bring it on. I'm ready for it. This next year is going to be a blast. Every day's an experiment out here. The only thing you can really rely on is yourself and your skills and your creativity with those skills. I can't even imagine what would happen if this place burned down. Fingers crossed. All right, let's give her a shot. Three, two, one, go. disappointing summer nothing in this end the fishing was disappointing yeah it ain't working well the cabin project didn't get nearly the amount of time that i had hoped it would almost every day it rained but you never know on the yukon river things can go from really easy to really bad in about uh two hours yeah baby there's a definitive timeline and that's winter when winter hits Everything stops. If you didn't get it done, you wait another year to get it done. I don't think I've ever gone into winter completely finished with all the projects or all the things on my list. But um, my whole reason for living out here is to, to live with the land. 
So to do it well, you just got to get your ass up in the morning. You got to get out there and, and uh, do what you got to do. of meat, lots of food, and now it's time to go home. We're starting to get darkness now, so basically our summer is over and our fall is here. It's not sad to be leaving here, but I ain't glad to be leaving here. This is just wonderful country. So we have a whole day of just cleaning up camp today, getting all our stuff dried out and emptying this teepee so we could go on ahead and collapse it and put it up in a new cash chip dock for us. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. It's very educational for the girls to come down here. It's always a good investment and good learning process. You know, we are always getting ready. We're always getting ready for the next season. All of summer is just nothing but a preparation for winter ahead, and winter is nothing but a preparation for summer ahead. We're basically going to leave this here for the next time, and there will be a next time, I'm sure. Gotta do is move everything over and we're ready to go. Yep. I always feel like I'm never done here. There's just so much to do, there's so much excitement around to have to bring everything to the cache and secure it. And it took all the family to work together and uh manage to put it all away today. We're all started and ready to go. I'm gonna put the front door on and call it good. Okay. Everything we own except for our boating stuff is in the cache. Uh. Tighten it all down real good. I call this cache done. Ready for next season in the Kiwalik. The one after that, and one after that. The girls have got to catch caribou. They got to go out and catch geese. They got to catch salmon in the nets. They got to go egging. They got to learn how to look for smelts. Not only did they learn and observe, but they got to put hands on and participate. And my daughter Coot can cut a salmon now just as good as I can. Well, if we're going to do any traveling tonight, we better get started with it. Let's go, Carol. Pull it in, Coot. We got a big ocean to cross, a big sound to cross, and then we have a big lake to cross. Okay, we're loaded. Just the adventure and the health that came out of it is worth every penny. The whole summer's turned out. Yay, ready girls to go home? Home sweet home. 